came expecting God to do something good. Did you, did you come expecting God to do something good this morning? Amen. It is good to be with you this morning, and uh, I hope everything is going well with you. Uh, to do things just like this, and just so you know this morning, uh, you guys are on Facebook Live. Right now, you're on Facebook Live. Uh, and uh, if you would, just turn and look at Doug. And that is one of the ways we're going to do that. Uh, they wanted me to do that when I first came here a few years ago, and I said, absolutely not. I won't ever do that. That's stupid. I'm not getting my face on Facebook. Uh, but here we are, and my face is on Facebook. And uh, God said, yeah, I think you got it. So uh, we're going to keep doing that. And uh, but it is good to be with you this morning. I hope you came expecting God to do something great. Let's have a word of prayer this morning and uh, ask God to be with us in our service. And then we'll have Mark come and lead us in the morning. So, dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you this morning. Uh, for the opportunity to be here and the technology that you have uh, granted us the use of to be able to reach as many people as we can. And Lord, I just uh, pray that you'd be with us this morning and be guided and direct in our hearts and our lives. Lord, you know the prayer request this morning. And I, just, uh, I just happen to be thinking about Karen this morning and Lord, this week she's going to have some surgery done and uh, it's pretty serious surgery. And Lord, the, the, the anxiousness and the nerves and all of that that goes along with it, Lord, we just pray that you'd encourage her in these days. Uh, let her know that you're with her and you're going to guide the doctors through this process, that you're going to be with her and, uh, and lift her spirits up along the way, Lord, and just help us as a family to reach out to her and love her as well. Lord, we just uh, invite you into our service this morning, and more than that, we invite you into our hearts and to our lives and into our minds, and uh, Lord, we just want to be formed and shaped by you this morning. So whatever it is that you have for us, Lord, just reveal yourself to us in a very special way this morning, uh, one that is clear and undeniable, Lord, help us to know that when we leave here, we can leave the building, but we never leave your presence. Lord, we love you this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mark, if you would, come and leave. Good morning, each one. Uh, we're going to start out with victory in Jesus, which Muncie's not. Rick has some, so... Hopefully we'll get through it. I'm, I'm not sure how it goes, but it starts out good, so we'll see how. So victory in Jesus. Three fit. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, when I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory. Blood will never lose its power. <laughs> Who? Okay. Well, let's go to the blood will never lose its power while you're getting up here, okay? Come on up. All right. Well, okay, we'll go ahead and do the victory in Jesus 352. No, the blood will never lose its power. I don't know that one. <laughs> I 
It's okay. Uh, yep, 352. Mm. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory Oh, victory, Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some I'll sing up there that song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. You want to try the other one or not? Okay. <laughs> it's 438. You want to sing them? We'll go ahead and do that for Muncie then, and we'll, we'll redo this thing next Sunday for somehow to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm up here on the Facebook, and you've already prepared, so I'm, I'm having to have live here. So, the blood will never lose its power, which Bob Munson will do the accompaniment for that.
Which is what it's not it's not it. what they're saying. My mic wasn't on before. I told you. You got you got me covered? Okay. All right. Ready to roll.
ask for. But Lord, you tell us to bring our petitions boldly before the throne. Uh, in a way that only a father can love his children, Lord, you give us what we need in this life. We're so thankful for all that you do. And Lord, we, uh, we just want to worship you this morning. Lord, we just open our hearts and our minds to you, Lord. Reveal yourself to us in a very real way this morning. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Normally would. Uh, for moms. So, uh, so I, I decided I didn't. I'm just kidding. My wife uh, if you would get your Bible. So this morning, we're just going to call this Parents Preaching. And uh, and an understanding what uh, what parents uh, can expect from God as a child of God. And then the same way, uh, we should be doing the same thing for our children, in which God loves us and cares for us. We should be loving and caring for our children as well. We should be giving them what they need. We should know what they need and make sure that that's provided. But also, we should be sharing with them the great gifts of God as well. Uh, it's one thing for us to care about our children. Well, my children have never gone without me on that journey. My kids have the best clothes, and they play all the sports, and they, that's great. I, I'm, I'm happy for them, and that's wonderful. Uh, but what is the greatest need of child care is always that, and that is the need for God in their life, right? And so, as parents, for us to share that knowledge of God and his love for us with our children and to pass that down the line. I'm thankful this morning that I have Landon with me this morning. Uh, even though my children couldn't be here, I have a grandchild with me this morning. I'm, I'm thankful that, uh, you know, he has a need for God in his life. There's other things he needs. And, and, and I'm sure that we gave him more than what we needed when we came. While we had him because, you know, when you don't get him very often, you want to spoil him. So they got him. Probably a little more than what he normally would get, but at the same time, I want I, I just eat right and and do the other things. I also need to teach him about the great love of God and the grace. Of And actually, I'll jump back up to verse 9 here and just look at this. But I want to start with the verse 11. It says, Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, egg, Who asked him? There are three things this morning. That's probably shocking to you uh, that I have three points. But there are three things this morning that I think that we can see of God in this passage as a parent. And it's not just a man thing, it's a parent thing. And, uh, and, and God certainly is capable of being both mother and father and taking care of all of our needs. <coughs> So let me get this straight. I don't stand behind the podium because I don't like being confined to the podium. So now I have a microphone. (laughs) This preaching gig gets better all the time. So I can shut this one off because nobody wants to hear me twice. Okay. So I say there in verse 9, do I have to stand right here, Doug? Is it? Okay. So I can go over here. You can still hear me. Okay, that might not be so bad. If I go up here, can you still hear me? No. Okay, it's getting worse. Okay. <clears throat> These are the words of Jesus in red 
in Luke in chapter 11. And he says this, he says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. There's only one problem in that whole verse that I see. To him who asks. To him who seeks. To him who knocks. If we're not knocking, if we're not seeking, if we're not asking, we're doing without. How many of us in this life, if we needed something, wouldn't ask somebody for it? I mean, if it was desperate enough, if it was life-altering, how many of us wouldn't go to somebody and say, can you help? Can you give me what I need? I wonder how many of us in this life understand that the Holy Spirit working in our life, the gift that God has given us, is life-altering. It changes lives. It changes the way that we think. It changes the way that we act. It changes the way that we believe. It changes everything about us. It's life-altering. It's that important that we would have that. So, so when we read the next passage of Scripture, it's important for us to understand that if you don't ask, if you don't seek, if you don't knock, you don't get it. it it's, it's that simple. It, you, you ever looked at somebody and said, if you need it and you don't have it, it's because you didn't ask. That's basically what Jesus is saying here. If you need it and you don't have it, it's because you didn't ask for it. And the first thing I want you to know is this morning about God is he's not holding anything back from you. I, I listen to people all the time talk about how hard this life is to live and how hard it is to understand God and where was he then and all this stuff. And I say, God's not hiding from us. He's not trying to hold back what he has. He offers everything to us. The only thing he says is, you have to ask me because I'm not going to force it on you. I'm not going to make you eat it. Love Landon to death. He's a great kid. This morning, uh, we had a Danish. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, I, I like Danishes. <laughs> Pretty fond of Danishes, as a matter of fact. And this morning, he, I cut my Danish in half so that Landon could have half of my Danish. <clears throat> I'll be honest. It wasn't on the top of my list of things I wanted to do this morning, but I did that. Because Landon saw, I had a raspberry Danish, and he thought it would be really good. <clears throat> so, so he goes into the dining room, and he's sitting at the table, and he's eating this Danish. I've long devoured mine. And we're 25 minutes into this half a Danish. And I go in there, and there's like three bites off of it. And he says, I'm full. <laughs> On half a Danish? I've eaten a half a box of Danishes and not been full. He asked for it. He received it. You see what I'm saying? Do you understand the, the comparison that I'm trying to make here? God's not holding things back from us. And if he'd asked for the whole Danish, I probably would have given it to him. I say probably. Okay, I'm just being honest. But I know this. If we need something and we don't have it, it's because we didn't ask God. It's not because God's holding back. And I listen to people every day gripe about God not doing this or not doing that. And the question I always want to ask is, did you ask him? Are you seeking him? Are you searching for him? Are you knocking on the door? Because if you're not, he's not going to force his way into your life. He's just not. But I want you to understand, he offers everything to us freely. There's nothing that you can't have if you just ask for it. Nothing. Verse 9 says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Ask, 
and it will be given to you. It goes on there in verse 11, it says, Which of you fathers, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake? Or if he asked for an egg, will give him a scorpion? <clears throat> Do you know that God already knows what you need? Do you know that God is going to give you what you need in this life? I mean, do you really know that? I, I have to admit, I, I always get, uh, get tickled with this passage of Scripture because I always want to put my wife in that situation. How many of you, if, if you ask for one thing, they would give you a snake? And I always think, well, my wife would give everybody a snake because she ain't keeping a snake. So <laughs> I don't care what you ask my wife for. If she's got a snake, you're getting the snake. It, <laughs> it is important for us to understand that God knows what we need in this life. The problem is, for some of us, we have a, a, a problem understanding what the difference between a need and a want. But when we get those confused, the problem is we can become disgruntled with God thinking he didn't give us what we needed. When the truth is, he's given us everything we need, and more. I'm thankful that I have a father who knows what I need. I'm thankful that I have a heavenly father who gives me what I need. I'm thankful that he doesn't hold anything back from me, that he extends it to me freely, that I might be able to live this life as Jesus said, that he came, that we might live life to the full. You see, and I think sometimes we get used to living life not in the full, and then we get disgruntled with God because we didn't ask for all that we need in order to do that. It's important for us to understand this morning, if you go to God and you say, and this is another, another issue that I, I see that people in my ministry that I've dealt with, is I, I just want peace in my life. I just want peace in my life. Well, ask God for it. But understand, God will give you the peace but Satan's going to give you chaos. Okay? You ever heard of don't ever pray for patience? Now, why is that? Is it because you don't think God will give you patience? Or is it because you think Satan's going to give you everything to go against that patience? And my question is, do we really want what God has for us to the point that we're willing to take on what Satan has for us? Does that make sense to you? Am, am I getting across? I know there's trouble in this world. I know there is. But I know a God who can give you a peace that will get you through it. I know a God who will give you the patience that you need to get through it. There are times in life when struggles seem to abound, don't they? And, and, and it's almost like they never come in ones. They always come in threes and fours, right? And you go, man, oh, man, I just want some peace and quiet in this house. You'll get your peace and quiet. But it's going to come probably at a price. If you can understand that everything is not always going to be perfect, but God will give you what you need and what you ask for, it'll help your life to go a lot better. This, this whole thing of having to have everything we want instead of everything we need. The truth is, I want donuts. That's what I want. Donna's over here going, you're not supposed to. <clears throat> Man, I pray for David more every day. I want donuts. That's the truth. I need eggs. I'm thankful that God gave me eggs. I, I have eggs. Now, I ate a Danish this morning. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm no saint. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a Danish. Uh, I don't mean to say that I'm not a saint in that way. I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm going to have a Danish. In fact, I'm going to have a donut, too. <clears throat> but I know that I need eggs. What is it in your life that you want? that you're willing to substitute for what you need? What is it in your spiritual life that you're willing to 
substitute something else for in light of what God knows you need. You see, and let me give you an for instance, okay? I know some people in this world that like to be mad. You ever met people like that? They just like to be mad. I mean, for whatever reason, they don't, it doesn't take much. They just like to be mad. And, and they just like to tell everybody else how mad they are. And I go, why would you substitute mad that you like when you could have peace or joy or any of those other things? Why would you substitute that? Well, that's what I want. You ever notice that there are people who strive to be chaotic? And they, they just kind of thrive in the middle of all that, that chaos. And in my mind I go, why would I give up peace and quiet and joy in my life for all of that? It makes no sense. And sometimes I think we as Christians are willing to give up those things that God knows we need in order to get something we want. Does it make sense? I got some people shaking my head. I got other people going, I don't know, is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> <coughs> God knows what we need. I'm thankful that God knows what we need. Because if he has to count on me to tell him what I need, He's going to get wrong direction sometimes. Because about 7 o'clock in the morning, I think I need donuts. And the truth is, I need eggs. And sometimes, I think I need to be mad. And the truth is, what I need to be is loving and kind. I'm thankful that I have a Heavenly Father that knows what I need and that he gives me freely what I need now here's the here's the kicker for the whole thing and this is my third point okay what we need is the Holy Spirit you, you hear me what we need is the Holy Spirit in our lives we need the working of the power of God in every waking moment and sleeping moment we have in this world. That is our greatest need in this world, is the power of God to accomplish those things that we think and Satan tells us that we cannot accomplish. That we can be the type of people that God created us to be when Satan says there's no possible way that a human being can be that way. I'm thankful that God says, I know what you need and I'm willing to give it to you. But here's the kicker. Remember the first point? To him who asks, to him who seeks, to him who knocks. Remember that part of it? So my question is this this morning. What are you asking God for? What are you seeking in this world? And are you going to knock on the door and ask to be let in? Those are the things that matter the most to each one of us. Can we live each day with anxiety? Sure, we can. Can you live and be mad all the time? Yep, seen people do it for years, right? Can we live and not be joyful? Absolutely. We, we absolutely can be. You know people that are like that. You know, the negative Nellies, you know them. I, do, I only use Nelly because we don't have anybody named Nelly. But you know those type of people in your life. Do you ever sit and wonder, why do you want to be like that every day of your life? And in the same light, I look at us as Christians, as believers, and say, why would you want to live this life anything less than what Jesus came to give it to us? 
He came to give you life to the full. Why are you willing to do something less than that? When he says, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is seek it. All you do is knock. And he says, if you ask, I'll give you whatever you ask for. I'm not going to hold it back from you. I'm going to share it with you. And I'm going to have, help you to have the best life that I created you to have. Isn't that great this morning? Isn't it wonderful that we have a God that loves us enough to do that? That we have a God that understands us enough to know exactly what we need and when we need it and how much we have to have of it in order to get through that situation? I'm thankful that I don't serve a selfish God that holds on to those things. How bad do you want to have a life to the full? Do you want to ask? Do you want to seek? Do you want to knock? Or you say, no, I think I'm just willing to spend one more night with the frogs. Dumbest story in the history of the Bible. Pharaoh is there. God sends the plague of frogs, right? Moses comes back and says, God says, let my people go, and I'll take the frogs away. You know what Pharaoh's response was? Let me sleep on it one night. Why do you want to sleep on it? Do you like the frogs? What point is there to sleep on it? Maybe you're on the fence. Maybe you think, well, I don't know, frogs may be a good thing. Haven't seen near as many flies, right? I promise you, God knows what's best for your life. And the greatest thing is, he has the ability to give you those things for your life. Are you willing to ask? That's the question. Are you willing to seek? And do you understand the Holy Spirit is the greatest thing you'll ever need in this life? It will be your greatest need every waking moment. I would suggest to you this morning the importance of asking God for the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It'll change you. It'll make you different. It'll turn you into what he created you to be. If you'll allow it. Would you stand with me, please, this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, the, the truth is this life is hard. There are so many uh, emotions and so many different situations that a person can find themselves in and Lord, it's, it's easy to get confused on what we think we need. It's easy for us to, to begin to think that we need something else that doesn't come from you. It's easy for us to get turned around and begin to doubt and, and just to be willing to live in the current situation with the way things are. But Lord, you created us for so much more. And Lord, you love us and you care for us. And, Lord, I can't thank you enough for that. But, Lord, if there's someone this morning that's listening and participating in our service this morning, Lord, and, they, and they've just been willing to, to substitute things in their life instead of what you created them for, Lord, I just pray that you would just enlighten them, Lord. I just pray that you would help them to understand a need for you, a need for the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. Lord, show them to the life that you created them for, that you want them to enjoy, to live to the very full. And then, Lord, help us to be appreciative for all that you have done for us in this life. Lord, thank you so much for being with us today. We pray that you would remain with us as we leave this building. Help us to know that we never leave your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.